All right, so yesterday we learned about the point of concurrency of perpendicular bisectors, where it's located, and then the theorem attached to it. And then we learned about the point of concurrency of, me, of angle bisectors. Again, the name of it, the location of it, and then the theorem attached to it. So the perpendicular bisector's point of concurrency is called what? The perpendicular. For me, I mean, you're going to get to the end. There's going to be four of these. But perpendicular bisector, it's the longest name. And so its point of concurrency has the longest name, which is circumcenter. So if it says the perpendicular bisector meets at point G, G is called the circumcenter. And then the circumcenter theorem that said from that point to each vertex would be congruent. Which means if I look at this triangle here and I want to find EC, that's part of the side, right? What do I know about the EG if it's a perpendicular bisector? Where does it meet that side? What is E? 90 degree angle. And what happens to the actual side? It's a perpendicular bisector, right? Perpendicular says 90 degrees. Bisector says? At the middle. So E is the midpoint, which means B, if BE is 5, what's EC? Five. 5. And then GC is the segment that connects the circumcenter with the vertex, which, because of the theorem, these would all be congruent, which means GC is 7. Questions on that one? All right, then we focused on angle bisectors. So the point of concurrency of angle bisectors was called what? The in center, okay? Oh, and I didn't say this about perpendicular bisector point, but the point of concurrency that the circumcenter is in on out, right, for circumcenter. For the in center, it's where? Always in, okay? So this point is called the in center. It's always inside. And the in center theorem said that from the in center to each side is congruent. So each of these segments that have the right angles marking the distance would be congruent. If AD, you're trying to find if AD is 10, you're trying to find BD, which would be what? Also 10. How is it, wait, how do you find the opposite in center again? Say again? How, how do you, you find out? Because it says the angle bisectors meet at point D. So where the angle bisectors meet is the in center, and from the in center to the sides are so congruent. What's the circumcenter? Is that where the they circumcenter is where the perpendicular bisectors meet. Oh. Yep. So. Yeah. So wait. No. No. Because these are. This is perpendicular, right? But it's not the bisector of this side. DB has the perpendicular part, right? But this is, if this was bisected on each side, then it's the perpendicular bisector. But as it is, that's not the middle of each side. So we're going to learn about two more today. By the end of today, you're going to know four special segments, what, they, what the name of the point where they meet at, and then almost all of them have a theorem attached to it. Not the last one, but almost all of them have a theorem attached to them. All right, so 6-3 is about medians and altitudes. So first we're gonna learn what a median and an altitude it is, then we're gonna talk about its point of concurrency, then we're gonna talk about the theorem that attaches to it. The median of a triangle is the segment that goes from the vertex to the midpoint of the other side. So think median, like median in a road is the middle, right? So this has to touch the midpoint, but there's no perpendicular part to this name, which means it's not gonna be a right angle. It's going from vertex to the opposite side at its midpoint. Every triangle has three medians, and the medians are, concur are concurrent just like the other three, that, which means they meet at a point. So CD here is a median. If I wanted to draw the median that comes from A, I'd have to go from here to like the middle of CB, and that would be a median. And then if I wanted to do the median from angle B, I'd have to find 
the middle. It's not perfectly middle, but. I'd find the midpoint of AC and that would be the last median. And then this, again, they all meet at one point, which in a second you're gonna learn the name. So point of concurrency <coughs> of the medians, which is called the centroid. So we've got perpendicular bisector, circumcenter. We have angle bisector, in center. We have medians, centroid. Just like the in center, the centroid is always inside the triangle. And the centroid is also known as the center of gravity. Bec I don't know why I highlighted because. Because it's the point where a triangular region would be, will balance. So if I just wanted to put like one stick to hold up a triangle, okay, and I could find the centroid, that's where I would put that stick. And it would completely balance the rest of my triangle. It would lay it flat. So it's called the center of gravity. You could hold up a triangle shape, a triangular shape by one post if you put it at the centroid. And the centroid theorem says the centroid of a triangle is two thirds the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So these are no longer equal, it's two thirds. We tend to just call this like the two thirds theorem, but it is called the centroid theorem because it's dealing with centroids. So what it says is if I draw out my medians, which is what all those are, from the vertex to the point where the medians meet or from the vertex of the centroid is two thirds the length of that whole median. So BP makes up two thirds of BF. I mean, it might be strange, but it, it actually is proven. Like, if you actually drew it, yeah. Yeah. No. So then DC C to, C to P is two-thirds of CD. Or DP is one. Or DP is one-third. Yeah, you could do it that way, too. And then the other one, AP is two-thirds of A-E. Huh? I don't even know where to go with that one. All right, so I could give you the two-thirds segment and you'd have to find the one-third segment or you could get given the one-third segment and you have to find the two-thirds or you could get given the whole thing and have to break it down into its two parts. So that's kind of how you'll see this applied. So centroid is a two-thirds. From vertex to the centroid, two-thirds the length of the whole median. All right, example one says, in triangle LMN, S is the centroid, RL is 21, and SQ is 4. So this is how the information is going to get given to you. It will either say it's the centroid, which you need to know means the medians, or leads to the centroid theorem, which is the two-thirds theorem. Or it will say N, Q, M, P, and L, R are the medians. And then you'd also have to know that that's a centroid. Or that picture will literally be given to you because in that picture, by definition, each of those segments goes from the vertex to the midpoint, so those are the medians. So they gave you that it's a centroid, but they don't even need to. They could literally have just given you the picture. And then it says R, L, which is this whole segment, is 21. And SQ is 4. And it wants you to find LS. How do you do that? So since it's 2 thirds, you divide 21 by 3. Okay, so you're going to, yep. Divide it by 3, you get 7. Multiply by 2, you get 14. 14. Good. And then NQ, what portion of N, wait, did I, I, yeah, yeah, sorry, SQ is given. What portion of NQ is SQ? Is that the two-thirds part or the one-third part? One -third. The one-third part. So if I want the whole thing, how do I find it? One Multiply third. it by 3. So 4 times 3 is 12. Can you just look at it and see that it looks smaller? In this if you have a diagram, it's definitely visually going to be smaller. Yeah. 
So this would be four if it wanted an S, that would be eight because it's double it. And then obviously that whole thing is 12. Questions so far? All right, example two, a sculptor is shaping a triangular piece of iron that will balance on the point of a cone. What, at what coordinates will the triangular region balance? So what is it called? The point of gravity is also the centroid. So if I have, a di if I have this diagram, right, and I needed to draw the medians, how do I find the middle of each side? So some of them are easy, right? You can kind of eyeball here, maybe there, right? But this one is somewhere in between, right? So how do I know for sure where the middle point is between two points? The midpoint formula. So I'm going to take these two, 8, 2, and 10, 7, and get 8 plus 10 over 2, and 7 plus 2 over 2. And I get 18 over 2 and 9 over 2, which is 9 and 4 and 1 half, which is that point there. If I did that with the other ones, I would get 6 plus 8 over 2, 6 plus 2 over 2, 14 over 2, 8 over 2, which is 7, 4, which is where we had it. That one was kind of easy to see. And then at the top, 6 plus 10 over 2 and 6 plus 7 over 2, 16 over 2, 13 over 2, and it's 8 and 6 and a half. So again, that's where we had it, but now we're a little bit more accurate. So now all I have to do is draw a line from the vertex to that opposite side. So if I did it this way, it'd be there. If I did this way, it'd be there. And if I did this way, it'd be there. And where does it meet? They meet at eight, five. Good. Which would be the centroid, which would be the point of gravity. You know where they meet. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, That's it just might. Because <laughs> you eliminate work. It's always smarter. Questions on medians, centroids, or that centroid theorem? All right. Interesting. Yeah. The last one, so remember we said there's going to be four. The last one is the altitude. The altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the line containing the opposite side. And it has to have the right angle. Every triangle has three altitudes. And this time, the altitude can be inside, outside, or on the triangle. So altitude and perpendicular bisectors are in, on, out. Medians and angle bisectors are always in. The altitude is one of the hardest things to construct. Like you won't have to construct it because you, one, you need it to be perpendicular, but a lot of times it exists outside your triangle. If your triangle is a, a, a cute triangle like this, then I would go from the, the way there to give you one. From Q, straight down, making a right angle with the other side. That's one altitude. From P to the other side, I'd have to find where it would be perpendicular to the other side. And then I'd have to do the same thing from R. R, perpendicular to the other side. And they'd meet at a point. If it's a right what you'll see on the next slide. If it's a right triangle, then the altitudes actually are the sides of the triangle minus the one that comes 
op opposite the hypotenuse, which I'll show you in a second. But what is tricky is the obtuse triangle. So if I draw from the vertex of the side opposite from P, I get a segment inside the triangle. If I draw from the vertex of R, no matter where I try to hit QP as it exists, it would never be right. It would never be 90 degrees. So, the, and the same thing is gonna happen when I do it from Q. I'd never hit that right angle. So what you have to do is extend both sides of the obtuse angle out and then you would find from R to the line containing the opposite side, which is why that verbiage says that, and that would be the altitude. So these would all have to be extended out in order to meet, and they would meet outside the triangle. So just like a perpendicular bisector, the in on out happens, acute in, right on, and obtuse out. But again, you won't have to construct it. You just have to understand it. Yeah. For the first one that we just did. Okay. Point of concurrency for altitudes is called orthocenter. Altitudes are orthocenter. So perpendicular bisectors, circumcenter. Angle bisectors, in center. Medians, centroid. Altitudes, orthocenter. Each one has a name. And again, they would meet in, on, or out. In this diagram, this is an acute triangle, so they meet in. Example three wants us to draw and find the orthocenter. So I'm gonna draw my triangle, negative three, negative four is x. Negative 3, positive 4 is Y. 5, 4 is Z. What is true about this triangle? It's a right triangle. Where will my orthocenter be? So it's on the triangle. It will actually end up being at the right angle. Whereas the perpendicular bisectors meet at the midpoint of your um, hypotenuse, this is going to meet at the right angle, and this is why. If I start at each vertex and I draw it to the segment opposite it at a right angle, so like if I rotate this and I make the, oh, let me group it first. Okay, if I rotate it and I make the XZ the bottom, and I want it to be horizontal because it'll be the easiest way to spot it, and I draw from Y to the opposite side, at a right angle, it looks like it's there. That's one altitude. Then I'm gonna rotate it so that YZ is the bottom. So you could physically turn your iPad. And I'm gonna go from X to the side opposite where there's a right angle. And that's actually the side that's already there. And then the last one would be to do the same with Y, X at the bottom. I'm gonna come from Z and I'm gonna draw from the vertex to the opposite side at a right angle, which is the other leg of my right triangle. So these all meet. These all meet at Y, which would be the right angle and the vertices there are negative four, three. And that will happen every single time. Right triangle and altitudes meet at the right angle. Right triangle, perpendicular bisectors, they meet at the midpoint of the hypotenuse. Here's what it looks like for the in on out of an orthocenter. So the acute triangle we saw a couple of times, it happens inside the triangle. So acute inside, right is on and specifically at the right angle. And obtuse is outside.
the good news is there's no theorem for altitudes. Like, there, like every other one has a theorem attached to it. Altitudes do not, okay? The kinds of questions you'll get for altitudes are the altitudes of a right triangle blank meet outside. And it's going to be an always, sometimes, or never question. So the altitudes of a right triangle blank meet outside is what? Altitudes of a right triangle blank meet outside. Always, sometimes, or never? Never. The altitudes of a triangle blank meet outside. Sometimes, because if it's an obtuse triangle, it does, right? But it's not an always. Altitudes of an obtuse triangle blank meet outside. Always. Good. So those are those kind of questions you're going to see. Mars. All right, so this has it all in one slide, okay? The only thing I would say to add to this is you're in, on, and outside for perpendicular bisector. In center is in, median is in, ortho is in, on, outside. This um, perpendicular bisector is midpoint of the hypotenuse for the on and altitude is at the right angle for the on. So t tonight's homework is obviously 6-3. Tomorrow we'll do the review for your quiz, which is Thursday on these sections. Yes, sir.